What do you mean you found the real thing? Mr. Keller's twin. Are you sure? 99% sure. It all seems uh. to check out. Yeah, well, until you're 100% sure, I'd prefer it if you didn't say anything to Mrs. Walsh. These so-called twins keep popping out of the woodwork. Soon we'll have quintuplets. I don't want her getting her hopes up. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Gray. Thelma told me all about that. Now, what's the matter? What is your, what is your problem? Why can't you find the twins? Certainly, I pay you now. I was just telling your son-in-law I have found him. His name is Sam Markham. And I have the address where he works. He's right off the loop in downtown Chicago. Look, damn it, I'm concerned about my wife. It's very important that the warder's instruction be carried out to the letter. Do you understand? Do you understand? Call me back when you have further news. Who was that? We have a problem with a shipyard down in Genoa. How was your meeting with Janice? Well, I think she was a little miffed that I kept her waiting while we talked. But I'm glad we did. I feel much better about things. I'm... I hate it when I feel that wall between us. I really do. So do I. So do I. I think that the problem is that we need to get things off our chest. Right away, no matter how painful it is. Okay? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long have you known? I found out right after Thanksgiving. Well, if you've known for that long, why did you wait to tell me? I have been trying to tell you, Cal. We just keep getting interrupted. Well, we haven't been together since back in October. So the way I figured, it's got to be Lafferty's. How can you say that? I never even How can I say you? that? You think I'm so damn old and feeble I can't see what was going on right under my nose, right here in this office? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the rest. Besides, you know, if you really thought it was my baby, you'd have told me right away. I can't believe this. I have just spent the last half hour on the phone trying to pacify the CEO of Craft Goat Toys, accusing us of not following up on their accounts. Not to mention the hour I spent with Hal Munson talking about Link's murder. You know what? I can't take this anymore. Connor, what's going on with the Delphi presentation? Tell me about that. I'm not finished yet. I still have to do the budget. Connor, that was supposed to be express mail to them two days ago. They are expecting it. Now, I am trying my damnedest to keep ten accounts happy, and all I asked of you was to follow up on one account. I cannot run this company on my own. I need help. What do you think that I was doing for all those weeks where you were out holding Royce's hand? And I think I have more than made up for it, even after he left me at the altar. Well, at least you weren't pregnant when he did. As the world turns. Brought to you today by Pringles. So fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. You're pregnant? <sighs> yeah. Oh my God. No wonder you've been so distracted lately. That on top of the murder charges. Connor, it's all right. We will manage. I, I, I put several calls into headhunters, and they're, they're sending over some resumes that sound, that sound promising. Everything will be fine. But I do think you need to, t you need to think about taking a leave of absence, like we, no, like we talked no, about. No, Emily. That's just going to create more doubt in the minds of our clients and our stockholders. I am not leaving. I can handle my work here. Well, you think you can handle it now, but look how sick my mother's been with her pregnancy. I am not sick. I just... I'm tired sometimes, that's all. Look, 
This has got to be our secret. I don't want anyone else to know. Why not? Because it's just going to complicate the, the investigation, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to make things look worse for me. Connor, how far? I, I just, I hope that Hal finds the real How killers. far along are you, Connor? Three months, a little over three months. Three months? You're going to be showing any day, any... Are, are you planning on... No, I'm not. You know, I considered it. I've been really nervous about doing this on my own, but... I decided that I want this baby very much. Well, then you have to tell Cal. Connor, you have to tell Cal. It's going to make all the difference. He's going to want to be there I for you. I told Cal. He doesn't want anything to do with the baby or with me. He thinks the baby is Lynx. Well, you told me you didn't sleep with Link, right? Right. Well, did you tell Cal that? He doesn't believe me. Well, then I'm talking to Cal. Let me no, talk to Cal. No, no. This is my problem, and I want to deal with it. Emily, you better promise me. I mean this. I... Don't say anything to me. Well, we're staring down the barrel of a loaded gun in New Guinea. One more damn mess that Link left for us to clean up. While we were with Janice, I got to thinking. How would you feel about a nice romantic dinner in our suite tonight? No business, no Falcon Club, just the two of us. Sounds nice. Good. Because I already talked to the chef. He's going to prepare <laughs> something squisitamente buono. Mmm, that sounds wonderful. Plus, I have a surprise for you. What? <laughs> what? What? I just told you it's a surprise. What? Well, give me a hint. Don't do that to me. All I can say is it has to do with the masquerade ball next week. <gasps> and I want you to go out and buy yourself a new dress. Oh. A knockout. Okay. Mm. Ah, love in the afternoon. Eddie, we were just talking about the masquerade ball. Are you going? Of course I'm going. I have assured your husband I will be of any help I can. Great. Well, since you're feeling so generous, I don't want that to escape me. I'm going to go to fashion to get a new dress. Get myself in trouble again. <laughs> I'll be there if you need me. Good See time. you later on the yacht. See you Ciao. later. Ciao. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you, Eduardo. We've got to talk. Yes. I found out some interesting news about Lisa's ex-husband today. Which one? The last one, Earl Mitchell. It turns out we used to chum around in the same Riviera crowd until I lost track of him. He, he dropped out, met and married Lisa. Small world. Yes. But that isn't all. Not only were we members of the same jet set, but it turns out he was a member of Interpol. And just how did the bit of information get by you before? On occasion, even I slip up. When you were very young, we had some problems with the operations at Lago de Como. I met him when I pulled him out of the water after a boating accident. This news about Interpol explains his presence there. Ah! My good-for-nothing overpaid pilot doesn't even answer his beep! Maybe the poor guy's taking a five-minute break. Look, listen, why don't you just sit down, take a breath, I'll get you I a drink. I knew it! I was right! I was right! And I'm not gonna wait another minute. This is wonderful. I'm going to Chicago. Now, you have a picture, of course. You, you, have, you have a picture? No, I, um, I don't, haven't even met Mr. Markham yet myself. Why not? Well, I thought I'd check with you. I didn't know how you wanted it handled. Look, Lucinda, considering what Royce just went through with a con artist who is probably after your money, I think we need to slow down. Why are you being so negative, Mr. Darling? Gray has already said he's not 100% sure. Well, I said 99%. As hard as the Markhams tried to put some distance between themselves and Peoria after the adoption, they still left a paper trail. I trust you've done a thorough background check on this guy Markham. That's my next step. I thought I'd check with you first. Well, you said he's working in Chicago. What exactly does he do? All, all I know is he works in some kind of art gallery. <gasps> art. Art. The art connection. That does it. Oh. Oh, darling, I'm not going to wait another minute. I'm getting Royce. We're going right to Chicago. Listen, to, please, just slow yes. down on this, okay? Yes. You can't just walk into Listen. some stranger's life, tell him that he's your long-lost brother. Let Mr. Gray 
dig around a little deeper on this guy. You've waited all these years without knowing he's existed. What's another week? It's exciting. Don't you understand that? This is exciting stuff, and I do not have to explain myself to you. So, I'm getting Royce. We're going to Chicago. You're going to get on the phone to my good-for-nothing pilot. You find him wherever he is without his beeper. Refuel the plane. I'll meet you at the airport. Oh, wait, well, what about me? I'm the one who went to Peoria with you in the you first place to find this twin. You are marvelous, and you will be again. But somebody has to mind the store. Come on. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, another thing I forgot. I forgot. Felix, I promised him Worldwide is going to do the benefit for a place to call home, and you are... Don't look at me like that. Organize it. Send out memos to the board. I want the both of you at the party with smiles on your face. Cinda is taking no prisoners on this one. You get the idea that this twin is important to her? Maybe too important. Hi. Oh, hi, Dawn. How are you, How are you doing? It's so slow today. I can't believe it. It sure is. How are you? You seem a little strange. Yeah, well, I just uh, got some news. It was a bit of a shock. Is it something to do with Connor? I know you believe she's innocent, didn't kill Link Lafferty. Well, Tom thinks she's guilty. How do you guys feel about being on opposite sides of the investigation? Well, Tom and I have never seen exactly eye to eye, but uh, we managed to stay friends. Hello. Hey, Evan. Hello. Have you seen Lisa? She was supposed to look over some proposals that Emily and I came up with for a new BRO campaign. She did, and she said it's fine. Great. Well, thank you very much. Listen, Evan, as long as you're here, are you mind answering a couple of questions? Actually, I'm a little bit of a hurry today. I'm sure you want to help your sister. Well, when you put it that way, then. Apparently, Fred Greer tried to shake down Cal a while back, sell him a tape that may or may not have had some evidence on it. Did you know about that? Yeah, Cal told me. Well, according to Emily, you wanted to offer Greer some work at Walsh Montgomery? Is he trying to shake you down, too? He'd made some veiled threats, and I was worried about Connor and the company, so I tried to keep him quiet for a little while, at least till the police found the real killer. Uh, pretty risky dealing with a guy like that. Yeah, I know. Realized it was a mistake. That's why I got out when I did. Early. Is that the only reason? What are you getting at? Well, Greer's office was broken into. He said that there was nothing missing, but if there were a tape... Look, are you saying that I broke into Greer's office and stole the tape? Even if you did, I'm sure you only did it to protect your sister. What was on the tape? Emma? I didn't steal any tape, and, well, I wouldn't know what was on it, would I? Evan, you know that you can trust me. I am working for Connor. You're working for Kirk, and he's not doing it out of the goodness of his heart. He's got another agenda. Now, he may be able to fool Connor, but not me. Nice seeing you. You know something, Evan? The way you're stonewalling, it makes me wonder whether you're trying to protect your sister or yourself. You know, you got a hell of a nerve, Munson. What's going on here? Hey, you. I wasn't expecting Hi. you back till tonight. Oh, huh? I took an earlier Hi. flight. What's going on? I'm nothing. sorry, Barbara. This is between Hal and me. If you have any questions about BRO, I'd be happy to answer them, but uh, I'll be damned if I'm going to stand here and play interrogation room because you miss being on the Oakdale PD. Well, when Lou first raised the possibility of my having a twin, it was, well, it was during the trial. So, uh, you know, it was kind of scary, but it was also intriguing, considering everything was going on, especially if, if you were identical. Why, were you afraid he might be like Roger? No, I, I didn't even know about Roger then. How did you feel when you uh, met this fellow who claimed to be your brother? Well, you know, at first, uh, he was nice enough, and we talked, and... He told me he played the saxophone, and uh, he worked in construction, and so, you know, at least there was the possibility that he could be legitimate. And, uh, and then I started beating myself up because I, I didn't feel any connection with him. Uh, so Craig and I set a trap, and 
And we caught him. He turned out to be a con, and... Well, uh, Roger hasn't been that close to the surface for a long time. I can understand why he wanted to talk to me. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon, madam. Good sir. Good afternoon. If you wish to see Mr. Keller, I'm afraid that he... Actually, we're here to see you. Me, sir? <laughs> yes. A present for you. Oh. Uh, Graham. <clears throat> <laughs> Show them in. Why don't you? Yes, please. I'm so <laughs> thank sorry. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Hello, Gordon. <laughs> I hope we're not interrupting something. No, not at all. This is Dr. Spiros, Hello. Mrs. Snyder. Nice, nice to meet you. Mr. Simon. How do you do? Simon. Do you do? <laughs> Graham, would you like to invite your guests for tea, perhaps? Hmm? Uh, please, may I offer you some tea? Oh, sure. Why not? It's cold outside. <laughs> take the chill off. May I take your coats? Yeah. Uh, but first, I'd like you to open this belated thanks for saving my life. Oh. Hey. Oh. <laughs> it's been a long time wrapping. Yes. <laughs> Emma does wrapping. <laughs> P.G. Woodhouse? Mm -hmm. It's a first edition. My word. Thank you, sir. You will. How, um, how on earth did you know that that was one of my favorites? Truth is, Royce told me. <laughs> I've known about your vice for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be more fitting. You are every bit as remarkable as Woodhouse's butler Jeeves and... He's gotten me out of just as many scrapes. <laughs> Excuse me. Full house? Yeah. Hello, Graham. Uh, Darling, good. good. Break out your leather motorcycle jacket. We're going to Chicago. Your twin has been found. Every day, Roger Thorpe is out for revenge. I go straight from here to the cops and I tell them what you did to me. And every day, he's not above blackmail. I'm the victim. I can nail anybody I want to nail. But can he get away with it? You're going to have to come straight through me. Quick, turn on the light. Guiding light. You're a little late, Lou. Craig and I already met this twin. He was a phony. No, not that one, the real one, the real one that Mr. Gray found. He's in Chicago and his name is Sam. Sam. Sam Markman. Markham. And darling, he works in an art gallery. Mm, would you like to take your coat off? No, I don't want to take my, Break out your leather jacket. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't expect to see you here. Emma, oh, we just stopped by to give a gift to, evening. to Mr. Hawkins. He saved my life once in a plane. He's a master of CPR. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. But uh, I must not stray from my purpose, which is to tell you that Mr. Gray has done his job, and now it's time for you to do yours. He's your twin. He probably doesn't know that he's been found. He doesn't know anything about us. He doesn't know about you, me, Neil, anything. But he's in Chicago. My plane is fueled and ready to go, and we can get there before the gallery closes. I'm not interested. Of course you're interested, because this is very interesting. I'm not. I'm sorry. One twin a week is my limit. This is not funny. I'm not joking. I'm not about to let myself be shaken down by another con artist who's after our family money. Look, I, I don't blame you, Mr. Keller, but I really believe this twin is the genuine article. Really? Well, then, Lou, you go ahead. Do your family duty. Clasp our long-lost sibling to your bosom. Harry, can I have the uh, jet refueled, ready to go as soon as I get to the airport? That's great. Uh, no, uh, Mrs. Walsh will not be joining us this trip. Okay, I'll see you in 15 minutes. I'm impressed. First the chair, now the plane. What are you up to? Weren't standing there long enough to hear. Think you can beat Lucinda to the airport? I know she's got to go to Ruxton Hills to pick up Royce. That's going to take a little time. In the meantime, I can try to stop herself from hooking herself on her own line. Very noble of you. I don't think Lucinda's going to appreciate the gesture. Look, she is way over the top on this thing. She's making herself an easy target. I agree. I don't think she ever got over that stuff that came out in Royce's trial about her mother. I think this is her way of making up to Royce the things that their mother did to him. Yeah, well, that may be so. I need four copies each and then sent to in her office. Thanks. Bye. I don't think Lucinda's going to be too grateful for you for blowing her big moment of reconciliation. Oh, she will be if the guy turns out to be a fraud. You got 20 bucks on you? Look, if I check the guy out, he turns out that he's for real. She can play Lady Bountiful all she wants. In the meantime, I'm out of here. Oh, and Kirk, don't go running off to Lucinda telling her what I'm up to. Absolutely not. I want you to do whatever you think is best.
bombs away. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. You know something? I had a feeling you'd see it our way. I expect that delivery by the first of the week. What a pain. Who? Rivers. Why we keep dealing with this clown, I'll never know. Because he makes gorgeous fabrics, that's why. Yeah, well. Listen, hon, as long as you got a minute, there's something I have to tell you. No, I want to talk first, OK? Uh, listen, I know that you're upset about me questioning Evan, but. <laughs> It's not that. I've just been doing a lot of thinking, that's all. I'm just wondering if maybe I was wrong to ask you to give up the force and come to work at BRO. Maybe it's time I give up what Kim calls my noble experiment. Uh, come again? I think I've been very selfish, wanting you with me. It's just that I wanted you safe, that's all. Oh, hon. I know you went through hell when I was working undercover for the Crime Commission. I would never, ever do that to you or to the kids again, but... I admit that I really miss being a detective. And if I were to go back on the Oakdale PD, it wouldn't be the same. I mean, there wouldn't be nearly as much risk involved as before. Well, I wouldn't want to stand in your way. I mean, I know you were a terrific detective. But do you know how terrific you are in this business, too? I mean, do you realize for the first time in years, BRO is running so smoothly that I can do what I do? I can design. I can create. I have the best spring line coming out that I've had in years, and it's all because of you. And I missed you so much when I was in New York. I love having you with me every single day. And, and in New York, everyone was saying how wonderful you are. Oppenheimer, all the other suppliers, everyone was going on and on about you, Al. You have a gift. But I want you to be happy. You know something? As long as I'm with you, I am. Hello. Hey. Hi. I'm so glad you're back. I need a fabulous gown for the masquerade ball, please. Somehow I thought you'd be coming in and I put something aside that's just right for you. A costume ball? Uh, just fancy masks, well, like the carnival in Venice. Yeah, it sounds like it's more of Franco's alley than my alley. I ain't going. Oh, yes, you are. Boy. I already told Jessica we would be there. It will be painless. I promise you I have something for you in the back. Okay, okay. good. Also, I need something for tonight for Damien. Oh, going out somewhere? Staying in. Oh, I like that. Okay. Let's look at those first. All right, <laughs> okay. right over here. Ooh. Hi. May I help you find something? I'm just browsing. Okay. Sì, Cesare. Grazie, grazie. Ciao. There's nothing new on the bomb scare in Rome. Certo. You know, Eduardo, I put up with your vague denials for a long time, partly because I wasn't sure I wanted to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. But now, with Hans alive and bombs showing up in our business, in our offices, you better come up with some straight answers. I have to be sure you had nothing to do with Hans and the bomb that nearly killed Patricia. I have told you over and over again that I knew nothing about that bomb. Why are you so suspicious? Because you have a habit of looking for quick solutions to complex problems. Ah, That's why. Ah, I see, I see. Bertram again, huh? It's the goodest place to start as any. I'm not going to stand here and pretend to shed tears over that man. He was a threat. 
to our interests. Now, he may have been wonderful over a cocktail party, but in a boardroom, he was a cold-blooded opportunist. He spent the last few months of his life scheming to get you and I out of this company. I was dealing with that, Eduardo. There was no reason to resort to kidnapping and murder. I had nothing to do with that killing. I did not order him to be eliminated. I don't even know who did! Uh. I hate the fact that he was killed. But I am not hypocrite enough to pretend that his death is not in our self-interest. This damn New Guinea project's turned out to be nothing but a sinkhole for my money. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever see a return on my investment. Well, maybe you should go there yourself and oversee things. Well, I reckon I could spare a week. Maybe two, but I, that, that, that's not the solution. I need somebody there on a day-to-day -day operational basis. We're staring at a disaster here. Yeah. Hold on. Jane needs to talk to you. Yeah, Jane. Uh-huh. Oh, great. No, I gotta go in my office. They're sitting on my, they're sitting on my desk and it's some file. Just tell him I'll call him back in 10 minutes. Goodbye. Dare I say damage control? What now? I'll tell you about it later. Connor, just think about what I said to you before Cal walked in, okay? I think if you get all the facts on the table, it's gonna make a world of a difference. It wouldn't be in this mess in New Guinea if Link had gone there in the first place. I seem to remember he thought you should cut your losses and get out of there altogether. Well, of course he did, because he didn't want to go. Cal, Link was a manipulator and a liar about a lot of things, but he was on top of his work and he knew the New Guinea situation. Oh, the hell he did. All he was interested in was himself. He didn't want to go because he wanted to be here because he was determined to come between you and me, and he did it. Well, maybe he wouldn't have if you hadn't pushed the issue. If you had just trusted me a little bit more and had been so eager to get rid of him that you started running around issuing ultimatums. Well, wait a minute now. Am I hearing you defend him? No, I'm just saying that maybe if you hadn't been quite so jealous from the very beginning. Well, it looks like I had good reason, didn't it? Oh, that is not true. I admitted that I had some unresolved feelings for him, but I never did anything Well, he didn't stay me. unresolved for very long or you wouldn't be carrying his baby. How are you feeling about letting Lucinda go to Chicago without you? Do I feel guilty? No. I smoked out the last imposter. It's her turn. Mr. Gray seemed pretty certain. You find it at all interesting that this potential brother works in an art gallery? <laughs> Dr. Spiros, I don't care if he's the next Vincent Van Gogh. He's not going to replace my sister. I wasn't suggesting that, but... You know, you've shown a lot of courage in accepting and adapting Roger and Dooley and into a fused personality, so why reject the possibility of even enjoying knowing a, a twin brother? Okay, I'll think about it. The question may be immaterial anyway. Why do you say that? Because if my sister Lou comes on the way she usually does, my potential twin is probably headed for the hills by now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the house is absolutely lovely, Rose. Sure. The design sure. is just incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. We're still kind of redoing it. I'd love to see the kitchen. Well, I'm sure <laughs> Graham would love to show it to you, wouldn't you? <laughs> of course, it would be my pleasure. Those scones were so delicious. You must give me the recipe. Oh, <laughs> Graham doesn't share recipes. Doesn't share? Thank you, sir, but I'm sure I could make an exception in the case of Mrs. Thank Snyder. You. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'll show you the kitchen just as soon as I put another log on the no, fire. No, I'll do that. Go on ahead. Oh, please. Thank you. Excuse Thank you. me. Please come this way. Oh. Dr. Spiro, so... I was wondering, I've been feeling a little stressed lately, and I'd like to get uh, an objective opinion. You think you could give me an appointment? Hmm. Certainly. Why don't you uh, just call the clinic and speak to my secretary? Oh. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> well, shouldn't be long before we hear from Lou. Her jet should be touching down in Chicago any minute now. What are you doing here? You left me in charge, remember? I thought you'd be in Chicago by now. Did you have anything to do with all of this? With all of what? Craig took the, took the jet without me. 
He went without me. Well, he's never been much of a team player, but I thought that was because he was your fair-haired boy. How are we doing with the charter flights, Thelma? Oh, damn. All right. Book us on the 5.30 commuter to Chicago. You're flying commercial? God. When I get my hands around the fair-haired boy's throat, I'm going to squeeze. I know the feeling. You sure he went to Chicago? Yeah, I know he went, because I spoke to him. I, 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 I... I ordered him back, and he refused. By the time I talked to the tower, and they were circling already. They were circling around O'Hare. Imagine that. It's just that it spoiled it for me. I mean, he's going to see the brother. I, by the time I get there, it won't be the same. Maybe and, you call a gallery and speak to Markham before he gets there? Oh, no, I can't do that, darling, because it, I, this is, requires delicacy and finesse. It's got to be done face to face. We better hurry up. We're going to miss the 5.30 commuter flight. Perhaps you'd like to reconsider knocking down that wall to my office? Enlarge it. I am not amused by any of this situation. <sighs> yes, Thelma. Sure, put her through. Connor. What's wrong? You sound upset. I really need a friend. I have a surprise for you, too. Yes. See you later. Bye. Lily, can I put that guy in the box? For Please. You? Thank you. Thank you. Um, has that man, has he, has he bought anything? No, and I don't think he's going to. He says he's Lily. browsing. Oh. You also have to take a look at that dress? Sure, good. Honey, Thank honey. You. Come on. I've been meaning to ask you, where is Lisa? Oh, my God. How could I have forgotten to tell you? Emily, what the hell were you thinking telling Hal Munson I offered Fred Greer a job? Well, you did, didn't you? No. And even if I did, it had nothing to do with Link's murder. Yeah, but if Hal thinks so now, it's going to make it harder on Connor and everyone else. Evan, I don't think so. Hal wants to clear Connor, not convict her, okay? And if anybody wants to get to the bottom oh, of this... Oh, come on. He's working for Kirk Anderson, remember? That editor of the City Times? Right. Well, you know what? Kirk may have ulterior motives, but Hal would never betray Connor. And if he intends to prove her innocence, then we have got to... we got to be open with him. We have to tell him everything. As a matter of fact... Wasn't it your bright idea of lying about her alibi to the police that got her into this mess in the first place? Now, if she had gone to the police like she wanted to and told the truth, she may have never been arrested, Evan. Don't you think you're just being a little bit naive? No, I don't. I don't. If there's one thing I've learned in my life, it's that secrets have this nasty way of coming out, sometimes when you least expect it. And the longer you keep them, the more harm they can do. You know what, if I, if I knew all of this, I would have just told Hal that she was pregnant. She's what? Thanks for bringing me here. I feel better already. That's why they call it comfort food. Well, it's for sure I needed comforting. I'll tell you, though, I was a little surprised to find myself calling you for it. So was I, pleasantly. I don't know why I thought of you, Kirk. Maybe because it was your idea to hire Hal to clear me. I'm going to take care of his bill, though. We'll worry about that when the time comes. I just want you to focus on keeping your spirits up. Speaking of which, I have to go to this benefit at Falcon Club next week. How'd you like to keep me company? Well, I don't suppose anybody else is going to be asking me. We will be wearing masks, too, right? <laughs> Glad to see you haven't lost your sense of humor. So what's got you so blue today? Cal. Well, we had an argument, and it got pretty bad. About what? About Lincoln the baby. 
He doesn't trust me, and he doesn't believe me. And... Well, I'll tell you something. Cal is on your side. I know that for a fact. No, he wasn't. You know, if he had had the idea to hire Hal instead of you, then maybe I would have believed it. But right now, I think that all he's interested in is Strickho. Listen, Connor, there's something you should know. Another red hat? Thanks, Mabel. I think I've hit my limit, though. Oh, come on. I just mixed up a batch of hot sauce that'll knock your socks off. Actually, I think I may have overdone it. You OK? I'll be right back. You know, Kirk, I was crazy about Ellie, and I, I was real sorry for you that it didn't work out. But I have to say that you and Miss Walsh make a fine-looking couple, too. So um, if you're going to need another wedding catered, you be sure to keep me in mind, huh? But, Lisa, where has Shannon been all of the... I understand you can't talk. Call me later, when you can. I want to hear all the details. Bye. Barbara, thank you for rushing that dress for me. Oh, sure, it'll be ready on time. <sighs> Shannon O'Hare is alive. Yeah. Well, nothing would surprise me with Shannon. No. Nope. What about Duncan? D <gasps> Duncan, what about Jessica and the oh. baby? Okay, Lily, you're all set. Thank you. Do oh, my. help you carry this out to the car. No, so I've got it. Just put it right on top there, thank you. There you go. See ya. Bye-bye. Watch your step. How far will a desperate man go to get what he wants? Watch out, Billy, and beware Bridget. When Roger Thorpe is desperate, he's dangerous. Next on Guiding Light. Children's Clothes by Good Lad of Philadelphia. Nurses' uniforms provided by nursemaid. This is Dan Region, inviting you to join us again Monday for As the World Turns.